So where you're standing, you're standing in Mungo Lakes. So 18,000 years ago was the last time these lakes were completely full. So where Red Top Lookout is over to my far left, to the dunes you see behind me to my far right, looking around about 30, 35 kilometers wide. Where you just drove from to where you are now, about 10 kilometers long. So you measured 14 meters of fresh water in these lakes back in those days. So all your native fishes, turtles, mussel shells, yabbies are all caught out of these lakes. Of course, Mungo is part of Willandra Lakes and Mungo is the smallest lake. So there's 12 lakes, so it's the overflow. So when these lakes used to fill, the waters used to come off the snowy mountains into the Loughnan River, then from the Loughnan River to top of Willandra Lakes. But these days, the waters don't flow down these lake systems anymore. It's all been blocked off. So now the water comes off the snowy straight in the Loughnan and straight into the Murray. Now, in 1968, a gentleman by the name of Jim Bowler was walking up on these dunes. Nobody knew who he was, what he was doing at him. So he was walking around and riding his motorbike around up on these dunes. Uh, what he was actually doing, he was actually seeing what the weather did to these lunettes and sand dunes. And when he came down off the, off the dunes onto the lakes, he came across these remains, marked those remains and came back a year later and unearthed those remains today known as Mungo Lady. Now, she was only 18 years of age when she passed. So today she's about 45 to 50,000 years old and she's the oldest human cremation outside of Africa. So a fire was lit for nine hours, her body was placed in that fire for nine hours, her body was burnt for nine hours, body removed, bones smashed up and placed back in the fire again for a further nine hours of burning, removed again and smashed up again, then reburied. Why? We don't know. Might have been a ritual or she might have had a disease and they didn't want that disease to go through the tribe. Then 1974, Jim Bowler did the same thing. Checked the dunes out, came down off the dunes, and 500 metres away where he found Mungo Lady, he came across these other remains, marked those remains, and came back two days later and unearthed those remains today known as Mungo Man. Now, he was in his 50s when he passed. So today, he's about 40 to 45,000 years old. He was still a full skeleton, and he had red ochre from his head to his hips. For him to have red ochre, he must have been a very important man in his community, like a respected elder, for him to be buried with ochre. Ochre was like gold, the most valuable, important material you ever had. So it was like your Egyptian kings and queens when they died, well, they were buried with gold, etc. So on the 17th of November 2017, Mungo Man was returned back home to country with 104 other remains. Those 104 other remains are women and children. Uh, so all those remains are on par, but they have not been reburied yet. We're just waiting for the government red tape to finish so we can uh, um, bury these ancestral remains. And when that's going to happen, it's not going to be advertised. Nobody's going to know when it's going to happen. So it's just by the elders, community members, World Heritage. So it's all going to be top secrets. So Mungo Man, Mungo Lady, another set of remains will be separated away from those 104 other remains. Now the dunes that you're looking at here call the walls of China because of the Chinese labourers that work here. So when the gold rush ended, a lot of them went back overseas, a lot ended up staying in Australia, and they came working on places like Mungo, which was part of the soldier settlements after the First World War. So they helped build that woolshed back there at the visitor centre. They did dance, fencing, other jobs. And every afternoon from back there they seen these dunes, so they decided to walk up here, and when they got closer to the dunes it reminded of home, so that's where the name Wall of China came from. 